100 is the number of days elapsed since Etienne Felix Tisekedi was sworn in as the head of state of the Democratic Republic of Congo, and many Congolese hope to see a new political economic governance. Forty-one passengers killed out of the 78 who were on board of an airliner of the Russian Air Flot Company. This is the report by the Russian media following a crash that occurred in the country on Sunday at Moscow airport after an emergency landing. These are our top stories. Stay tuned for more details in this newscast. Prisoners of Filimbi citizen movement were released. Congolese justice has overturned a three-year sentence for the exiled opponent, Moise Katumbi, and has dropped charges against his bodyguard in a case of alleged recruitment of mercenaries. Legal proceedings have been launched against police officers involved in repression of a student demonstration. On suspicion of corruption, public company agents and the Minister of Land Affairs were suspended. Since taking office, President Tisekedi has increased the number of his travels abroad and then in the provinces. He was welcomed in the United States, whose ambassador in Kinshasa does not miss any opportunity to bring his support to the new DRC president. Across the countryside, Mr. Tisekedi is working his image as president builder in the largest country in the sub-Saharan Africa, which lacks infrastructures. Work started in Kinshasa and provinces in the first 100 days. During a trip to North Kivu, Tisekedi denounced and threatened politicians who manipulate armed groups. However, he has not yet kept his campaign promise on moving the general staff to the eastern Congo, where dozens of militias are threatening civilians. The Congolese president has also not so far used his sovereign power as head of state to whom the constitution gives the right to appoint the prime minister. The reason is simple. He cannot just decide alone. The head of state has also met his predecessor twice since his inauguration. His prime minister must logically come from the pro-Kabila coalition that owns the majority in parliament, in the provincial assemblies and in the governorates of the 26 provinces. According to the law firm Maurice Kamto, Albert Zonga, Paul Eric Kinge, and 150 of their supporters were arrested in a totally illegal manner under various pretexts that actually mask a desire for political repression. President of the Cameroon Renaissance Movement and a renowned lawyer, Maurice Kamto was arrested with about 150 protesters following a peaceful march on January 26th. They protested against the victory of the incumbent Paul Biya, 86 years of which 36 spent in power. In the 2018 presidential election, considered by Maurice Camto as electoral holdup, the French lawyer Eric Dupont Moretti, hotshot lawyer of the Paris Bar, went to Yaoundé in mid-March to meet with Maurice Camto in prison. At the beginning of March, the European Union, then the United Nations and the United States alternately questioned the merits of the case against Maurice Camto. While the regional elections are projected in June and the legislative and municipal elections next September, the opposition speaks of arbitrariness with the abuses committed by the military against the civil populations in Anglophone zones, for example. As a reminder, in a statement dated March 6, 2019, the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights had denounced abuses after noting the brutal approach of the security forces to the crisis in the Northwest and Southwest regions, including the destruction of medical infrastructure, schools, and entire villages. Michel Bachelet, who met with President Paul Biya over the weekend ending in Yaoundé, called for measures to be taken now to defuse the growing crisis in the country and prevent such acts of violence from being repeated. About 15 Libyan journalists gathered in central Tripoli in support of Mohamed al gourish and Mohamed al shibani two of their colleagues from the privately owned Libya al Arar television station, were kidnapped on Thursday by a militia and are still missing. An abduction that occurred while covering clashes in south of Tripoli, according to Imam Ben Amer, a female journalist. They were demonstrating to support their colleague Mohamed al gourish and Mohamed al shibani who were kidnapped last Thursday. They had still not heard from them, and their fate is still uncertain, hoping that the kidnappers would set them free. 
Journalists were holding up signs calling for freedom for journalists and clamoring no violence against the media. In a statement, they called for the immediate release of their two colleagues without conditions. Iman Ben Amer added that the journalist is a civilian who has no relationship with military and political tensions. He must only send news and information from the field with credibility and professionalism. The association reporter Sans Frontier also claimed that these journalists were abducted by pro after forces and they blamed the orchestrators for the kidnapping by calling all armed forces and militias in the region to abide by the international law and not to target the media. According to the Press Freedom Ranking in 2019 by Reporter Sans Frontier, Libya ranks 162nd out of 180 countries. The two civil and military parties seem not to want a single council for the end of the crisis in Sudan. They propose the establishment of two councils, one headed by civilians and the other by militaries. This is a further rebound since the resignation of Omar el-Bashir, while the establishment of a single council to lead Sudan seems to have taken shape. Civilians and military agree to get the country out of the crisis in which it has been immersed since Omar el-Bashir was evicted from power. Yet many statements were made about a single council. The meetings between the two sides followed one another. But against all expectations, the mediators in the talks announced a new measure. There will be two councils, a proposal that intervenes while the negotiations are in deadlock. There was no questioning the joint council. The sharing of posts was the main point of disagreement. While the military demanded a majority of positions, a requirement which was rejected by the civilians. There are already voices on one side of the opposition to challenge this agreement, which can bring total chaos to the country. An airliner of the Russian company Aeroflot crashed this Sunday in Russia at the Moscow airport after an emergency landing. According to Russian media, 41 passengers died out of the 78 who were on board. The aircraft would have issued a distress signal just after takeoff. Then trying an emergency landing, it did not succeed the first time. The second attempt was then deadly. The landing gear hit the ground, then the nose, and subsequently ignited, the Interfax news agency reported. Yet a source quoted by the TASS agency says that the fire was triggered by lightning. The images of Russian TVs show an impressive column of smoke rising from the aircraft. Other images show the plane on fire as it attempts to land, and passengers evacuated by the emergency slides located at the front of the aircraft. The aircraft, a Superjet 100, is the first civil aircraft designed in post-Soviet Russia. Source of pride at the time it was first launched, it has since been decried and hardly convincing outside the Russian market. Several foreign companies that exploited it have preferred to reduce or stop its use, citing problems of reliability. An investigation was opened into the causes of the accident. The cause of the fire is still undetermined. The RIA Novosti news agency said that an electrical malfunction could be the cause. Gabon is still looking for a national coach after the dismissal of Daniel Cousin in last March since he failed to qualify the Panthers of Gabon for the African Cup of Nations 2019. While things are tightening and the country through the Gabonese Football Federation technical body responsible for finding a new coach is preparing itself to definitely deal with this issue in the very near future. Some candidates stand out, including the Belgium Hugo Bros. Some source very close to this case reveals that the former coach of the indomitable Lions of Cameroon and winner of the 2017 AFCON with Cameroon Hugo Bros. could well make his return to the continent. The Belgium technician who would have filed his application for the post of Gabon's national team coach might probably be the man of the situation. 100 is the number of days elapsed since Etienne Felix Tisekedi was sworn in as the head of state of the Democratic Republic of Congo and many Congolese hope to see a new political economic governance. Forty-one passengers killed out of the 78 who were on board of an airliner 
of the Russian Air Flot Company. This is the report by the Russian media following the crash that occurred in the country on Sunday at Moscow Airport after an emergency landing. That's all for our newscast today. Stay tuned on Gabon 24 for more news.